Hi, my name is Jack Mark. I'm a marketing manager here at Horizon Hobby, and I'm here with a familiar face and Matt Andron. Um, and uh, most of you will probably recognize this from the Park Zone Icon A5 that we did a long time ago um, or a few years ago. And so the design's very similar, the paint's a little bit different. Yep. We're, we're going to talk a lot about that. So, first, I think actually the trim scheme's got kind of a cool story. It because does. Because yeah. of, of how well we were able to align this model with something Icon did over the summer. Yeah. So we were actually um, at uh, Air Venture in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, the big uh, Oshkosh Air Show up there, and uh, Icon's there every year, and uh, they usually have one of our models in their in their tent. And so this year we were talking to them about this is a you know this is a licensed model, so we were talking to them about you know doing this and what opportunities might be, and uh, we found out that they were going to be releasing or showing for the first time a new trim scheme for yep. their customer delivery models that they're going to be um, delivering later on this year. Yep. And so we said, well, you know what? I bet we could do that. Yeah. And, you know, and so we took a look at the artwork, and it's, you know, we, we figured that this was something we were going to be able to do. So on Monday, the first day of the show, we were able to unveil our new Icon at the same time that Icon Aircraft unveiled the same trim scheme on their full scale. And we were even able to get them a model so that our model sat next to the full scale pretty much the whole show, which yep. is pretty yeah, neat. And really they gave cool. one away, so it was kind of cool. Even better, too. yeah. So, um, so that's a pretty significant change, but uh, Matt, what else has changed from the original to this one? Well, I'll start with uh, what's basically the same to the original Park Zone airplane. Basically, the airframe is unchanged. It's all the same molds and everything like that, so okay. the parts from this new airplane will even fit your original Park Zone oh, icon. That's great. You yeah. know, if you've got a beat-up wing and just need a wing, but your fuselage is in good shape, you can get these wings and they'll, they'll fit your old airplane. Um, other than the paint scheme, pretty much the, the new things on it are the receiver and uh, the paint scheme. And the receiver is the, the big one here. Um, we were able to put the AR636 in there, which has AS3X, which just you know helps an airplane fly much smoother in turbulence and wind. But this one also has Safe Select, which is a huge, huge thing for this airplane. Cool. And so talking about Safe Select a little bit, we've talked about it now on a couple of airplanes. Yep. And, and so there's kind of been a trend here. There's been several releases and lately, and they've all had Safe Select. Right, right. Um, and we're getting a pretty good reaction to it, both from the guys that want it and the guys that don't want it, right. that appreciate how easy it is for them to basically live life as if it never existed. Exactly. Um, but this airplane's kind of unique because it's the first four-channel airplane we've ever put Safe Select in. Yep, uh, both the uh, the Timber and the Spitfire uh, Mark 14 that we released uh, earlier this year, both are, the Spitfire's a six channel, the Timber's a five channel. So this is just a simple four channel airplane with Safe Select in it. So the, the advantage there is that if I wanted to put, like say, say the Timber, if I wanted to put Safe Select on a switch and all I've got is say a DX4E, let's say I got a trainer, one of the own products, and I got a DX4E or I got a DX5E or the new DXE or whatever, yep, you know, yep. and I have this four channel or five channel transmitter, um, if it's possible for me now to put safe select on a switch, whereas I wouldn't have been able to do that on a separate switch, at least with the Timber or the Spitfire. Right, right, right. And so that means that the guys that are maybe buying this as a second airplane yep. are going to be able to keep that same, you know, not all of the same protection. Obviously, there's right, no right. beginner or intermediate or experience modes. There's right, no separate right. flight modes. But it's very easy for somebody who's comfortable on an apprentice or a super cub or something like that to transition to this airplane and keep the panic recovery sort of self-leveling. Absolutely, absolutely. So, and the big thing there is that means that their second airplane can be a seaplane. Right, and that's what's, cool. that's what's really exciting about it you know uh, you know we've talked about how fun this airplane is on the water you know being kind of the flying boat amphibious you know boat hull that it is you know it just handles so much differently than a traditional float plane like a cub on floats or anything like that sure. or even you know for yeah. the timber for that that matter you know when you have a single float you can actually carve turns and drag a wing tip through the water and I mean, doing the development of the original parks on one I've spent an entire battery is just on the water and never took <laughs> off. So you can have cool. a lot of fun yeah. with it, even even without flying it, to tell you the truth. Well, and then you mentioned that I think you even had to go track down landing gear to yep. do some testing. and Yeah, I had my old uh, Icon, and uh, I don't think it had ever had landing gear on it. You know, we'd taken it to Joe Nall and Seth all these years, and the landing gear was still in the bag with everything else. <laughs> so I had to, had to go dig through all my drawers yeah. and find my landing gear and get it installed so I could do some testing around the office here. So, But it's funny, because even at an air venture where guys were seeing this for the first time, and there's a lot of RC pilots to come oh, to Air Venture, very, and very large especially number. now that they're doing their RC flight line up there and guys are able to bring their airplanes. It's just yep. been this really great kind of blend of full-scale aviation and RC aviation. Absolutely. And we've had several people come up and, you know, they'll see the timber there, they saw the floats there, they understood that it was a float plan, plane, but they would see this.
this, and if they've got a pond or something near their property, this would be what they would gravitate towards Absolutely. and say, oh yeah, I've got a you know a pond or some body mm -hmm. of water near my house or a park or something that's perfect for that. Absolutely. So there's definitely an appeal to that kind of you know, dyed in the cloth seaplane type. Oh, absolutely. Type of product, and again, so. you know, like we mentioned, it's just a different type of flying. It's it's not like a float plane. It's it's just a different experience that you really have to try it to to understand how much fun it can really be. One of the things that we uh, that we did get asked about at, at AirVenture was uh, whether or not we had done anything to correct for uh, for a tail wag kind of characteristic that right. some guys were noticing on their airplanes. So, is could you talk a little bit about you know kind of what caused that on the original airplane and what we've done on this one to kind of help help with that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, on the model, we've had to take a couple liberties that uh, the full scale doesn't have. For example, our propeller blades are significantly larger, both cord size, than the propeller on the real airplane. And as a side effect of that, you know, if you were coming out of the bottom of the loop, would chop the power really hard. The air hitting this windmilling prop would basically put a disturbance in the air that would kind of hit the side of the rudder and okay. cause a little bit of a yaw come out of the bottom of the loops. Wouldn't hurt the airplane or anything. It was just more of a nuisance visually as you were flying to see your tail kind of wiggle. But once you put the power on, it would straighten right out. Um, even a couple of guys back then, we were just started to announce uh, AS3X, and we had the 635 receiver out. And a couple of guys put 635s in their icon and had a lot of success with it. So the 636 is even better. You know, with the AS3X, it really stops any kind of attempt for the airplane to try and do that uh, because it's the same airplane. That characteristic is still there, but the AS3X definitely stops it. So the guys that are buying the plug and play may still run into that, but anybody that buys the buy and play right, basic right. will have the. We'll have the. We'll basically probably won't. Exactly. Have the most and as long as you're smooth with the throttle management, even in the plug and play, it's it's not even noticeable unless you just really yank the power back from a higher speed. That's when you really see it. So, so one of the other things that hasn't changed from the original model is an additional feature you can buy separately. Yep. Which is the light kit. Yep. So uh, we have the uh, E-Flight uh, light kit in here, which is the universal controller, and then just a pair of headlights. And I can power it on here, and you can see how cool they are. Now the original. Uh, we recommend both the blue and the white headlights, either or, kind of your preference. Uh, I remember when I first saw the image of the icon on their website, sitting there in kind of the dark shade yeah, with the yeah, blue yeah, headlights. I, I had to do yep. the blue headlights because yeah. I just think it's so neat. Uh, you could even do, you know, red, green, yellow, kind of whatever color you want, but uh, it's just a kind of a neat add-on there. Uh, really easy to install. Basically, you remove two plugs, insert the lights, put the plugs back in, and then just route the light controller along the side of the fuselage tape it in place and plug it into an additional channel and you're and good the, to go. And the plugs are just friction fit, right? So this is almost no tools. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, cool. they're just like little rubber plugs to kind of seal those uh, headlight channels so you don't get water up into your clear headlights. Sure. Well, that's kind of neat. And then you said if it plugs in, you say you, it, it's powered off of a channel on the receiver, right? Right, right. So you could theoretically put that on, yep. uh, have it on a switch. Absolutely. So you could turn the headlights on and off on a switch. And if you wanted to, you could even use the same switch for safe select as your headlights. So that way you have even a better visual indication. The headlights are on, safe is on. Headlights are off, safe is off. Yeah. Or you could put them on separate channels. It makes it really universal and, and kind of customizable to what you want to do with it. Very cool. Very cool. So anything else you'd want to tell from so the, the transfer of parts from the new one to the old one is pretty neat? Yep, yep. All those are, are identical uh, in terms of fit and everything like that. Obviously, the trim scheme being a little different might not match exactly, but if you do need a part for your old Icon, you can definitely get it. Uh, still includes the fixed gear, uh, just a couple bolts. You can put the, uh, the landing gear on to fly off pavement or, or asphalt or anything like that. Pop the gear off in a couple minutes and be right back onto water operations. And then uh, one of the cool things about the Icon that I think a lot of guys have done, at least with the original Parks on one, is put a camera in the cockpit or something oh, yeah. to that effect. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you have this nice large kind of scale cockpit, basically guys have cut a small hole, put some sort of little camera in there, and you get a really cool kind of dashboard view of what it would be like to fly in an Icon. <laughs> and there's, there's some pretty wild, uh, neat videos out there online of guys doing just that with the original one. So I'm assuming guys will definitely do that with this one as well. Sure. And there's no, cam there's no uh, propeller up there, exactly. so you get a nice clear view. Yep, and yep. That's pretty awesome. Well, all right. So, well, thanks for taking the time to kind of run us through this. And then if you have any questions about this product or any other eFlight products, feel free to visit us on our website. Thanks for watching. <laughs>